Okay, so uh, so far we were able to cover a lot of uh, different uses for VLOOKUP function. We also did cover index match as an alternative for VLOOKUP and we did cover a case where we could use index and match to do something that VLOOKUP was not able to do out of the box. So an example of that was when we were looking for a stock item in this column and we were returning something that was located to the left of it. So, and we've tried to build this index and match to retrieve that value. If you don't know how it works, go back and watch index and match video. Uh, but in this video, we'll be covering another function that can get a similar outcome as VLOOKUP. And that function will be query function. Now, query function will be only covering as a substitute for VLOOKUP. The function itself it has a lot of different options and will it will need probably its own uh, series of videos to cover everything about it. This one will be short, uh, just about how to use it, similar to getting the same thing as VLOOKUP does. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll just... I guess I'll keep this one and I'll go ahead and copy this value and paste it over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is try to show you how to use a basic uh, query function to retrieve the same value as we have over here. So again, I'm going to start with my equal sign and start with my function name. And that's our function. The first thing we'll need to pick is the data. So the data is going to be the entire table in this case. Again, uh, we should usually lock these tables for good practice, comma. So the next thing is the string that we use uh, to run a query. Now, if you are somebody who has some experience with uh, SQL servers and SQL language, you will definitely know what's going on here right away. Uh, if you're not, it's probably not going to be as familiar to you. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do now, provide the string, which is going to be our lookup string. So it has to be as text, which means I'm going to do a quote, and then I will start with my select. That means we're going to select. The first thing we'll have to do is to select what we need returned as an end result. So uh, in this case, I'm going to retrieve the product name. So these product names that are over here. So if I look on top, it's in our B column. So what I'm going to say is select B. So I'm going to say, let's select the column B as an end result. So the next thing I'll have to do is to say in which cases to select the column B. So that's going to be the where statement. So we're going to say where, so where what? So we're going to check in our C column if it equals to this stock number that we have or not. So I'm going to say where C equals to, and then I'm going to go with this single quotation signs. And I'll, for now, I'll just type the item number right here, right? 3046 hyphen 89 hyphen 903 and another single quotation to close that. So I'm going to say select the column B where C equals to this. And I'm going to do another one, which is the limit argument to make it like a VLOOKUP. So I'm going to do limit one. So we want just one instance of it. And we'll you'll see what this limit does in just a little bit. If you don't understand it yet, that's fine. Just go with it for now. So limit one, so that's what I'm going to do. So that's gonna be my string and comma and finally the last argument is headers so if your data has headers on top like in this case see we have product name stock number type price cost and when you are highlighting your data you've included that in your data that you want to say how many rows your data takes so if i did highlight starting from this b2 cell and going down i would have done one as one row here is my headers but right now i didn't really select it so i'm going to say zero as headers that i have i'm going to do uh, this and close my parentheses now let's hit enter and see what we get and you can see that i'm getting exactly the same thing as we have on top 
Now the thing here is that let's say we want to switch to a different item. So I'm going to copy this one. Uh, let's do this one. Copy this. I'm going to paste here. You can see how our index match updates right away. I'm going to paste it over here too. And this doesn't update. So the reason it doesn't update is because I went here and manually hard coded this number in. It's not referring to the cell to see what's in there. So what I will have to do is very carefully make this a little more dynamic. And what that means we'll have to create this concatenated string. And the way I'm going to do that, I will go ahead and delete, highlight and delete this item number, not deleting the single quotes, we'll need those. So I'm going to do the double quote to uh, indicate that this is where just a part of my string ends. I'm going to do a couple of spaces here, another quote here, that's the second part of it. So we have one part on the right, we have another part on the left. And in the middle, we're going to need the actual stock number. And the way we're going to do that, we'll use an ampersand or the end sign here. And then we'll type the cell that we have. So B21, that's the cell. And then I concatenate again, another end sign to join it with the rest of the string. So as a result, and again, I'm doing some extra spaces here. You don't really need to do those spaces, but if you do, it's not going to matter. It will work. So what I'm doing, I'm saying, uh, let's take this part of the string, which is going to be C equals to this single apostrophe, and then grab what's in the cell B21, which is going to be this stock number. And then the remaining part of the string goes after that. So let's hit enter. And now you can see that it works. And now if we copy another value and we change, you can see it updates just the same way as our index and match does. And you can see that this worked exactly the same way as index and match did. So I'm searching in this column, but I'm retrieving from the column to the left, which is Kind of nice, but I could really use it as VLOOKUP and retrieve from any other column. So I could still look up in this column, but return the price. So the price is in column E, right? So instead of selecting B, I can select E as a result. And now we should get the price. So if we check for 903, the price should be, there it is, $100. So that works. Now, what's the advantage of using something like this, right? Now, the real advantage is when you have multiple items that are going to return to be returned. So what I mean by that, let me do this. Let me take this 903 item and there is one here, which is Nike free connect. And let's do, mm, you know what? Let's make this something that makes more sense because these items are kind of the same stock code in one way or another. So I'm going to copy paste this, paste this. Now we have a situation when the item repeats the stock number. So if we go ahead and paste this here, now you'll see that what we're go going to do here is just retrieve the first item, which is what index match or VLOOKUP will do. So if you remember when we were covering those functions, I said that index and match or VLOOKUP will only find the first instance on top, return that and ignore the second or the third instance. So this is where a query function will shine that you can make it to work in a way that it will return the other instances as well. So uh, first of all, let's change this back to column B as a return column. So we can see it gets the same thing. What I want to do is make this work that it will also return the second and the third match. And this is where uh, the reason it doesn't return right now is because I did limit one. So I'm saying limit to one item only. Now, if I do limit two, you will see that now I'm returning two. And again, this one is just this one, which is our index and match it has nothing to do with this one on top. So at this point, hopefully uh, you understand what's going on. So I'm just going to clear it. So it's not getting any more confusing. So we have two items. So we get the first one and the second one. Now, if we change this to limit, let's say 10, we only have three, so it's going to return all those three. So now we can actually look it up and return all the matches 
instead of just returning the first match that's on top. Now, uh, what you could do, you don't even really need this limit statement. So if I take the limit 10 and just remove it, I still do need that apostrophe there though. So I'm gonna do that. So you can see now it just retrieves all of them. So now it's just gonna retrieve, if we had 200 matches for the stock item, it would return all of them. Now, if you want to limit and say, I uh, let's retrieve only up to 50, then you will need that extra limit argument here in the end to actually limit to that many. So there it is, that's our query function, which can work like VLOOKUP, but return multiple values instead of just returning just one. Hopefully that makes sense and you found it useful and we'll see you in our next video.